Duncan Bailey, she's for the Honor Osborne, and this is Inside Exec. And I just hit my elbow on the table. Not funny at all. You are right? Yeah. Got another one. It's fine. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about feeling out of your depth. We'll look at a case study where you have put your hand up, volunteered for a position of responsibility, perhaps on a board or a community committee or some area where you're, you're not being paid for your involvement. So it's a voluntary contribution, not necessarily in the community. It might be in the workplace. It might be a, a, a joint committee with another organisation or, or a consultative committee or a, some other sort of joint activity where you have said, yes, I'll be the representative for this activity. And you went in with some idea that this was going to be an area where you could contribute, where you had some skills, some knowledge, some information that would help the process along. But as time passes in the initial phases, of say, say you're meeting once a month, then as time passes in the initial phases, you increasingly feel like you are out of your depth, that you're a lightweight in terms of the rest of the committee, that you really don't know what it is you can contribute and you dread the meeting days because it's going to be another opportunity for you to be inadequate in some sense. Well, and that's not good when you feel like that. <laughs> However, if it does happen, of course, the first thing you've got to do is there's two bits you've got to go back to validate. The first one is why did I put my hand up and how did it <coughs> feel at the time and what I was thinking at the time because that will give you the positive Thing that you're just missing right now. Secondly, you've got to trust that you were selected. Mm. If you're feeling you're not as good as the rest of the board members and all of that, remember they picked you for this particular role, voluntary role, because they felt you are the right person. Mm. And try and reflect on that, on the why. Mm. The other thing is, if we know everything about everything, all the time, that's not realistic. So there'll be things, if you're being realistic and not just feeling overwhelmed at the moment, you will find that you're actually, there's some things that you're very, very happy with and there's some things that you know you're very strong at and you're bringing to the table already. You feel that others maybe, I'm not sure, then research it. You've got a lot of other skills that you have proven to yourself over time in whatever you've done in other than this one. Go back to those. Go back and analyse why did you feel inadequate? Because that sometimes is that negative self-talk. You put your the idea in your head that they're better than me and you feel in any, and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So go back to facts, go back to logic, go back to answers. If there's something that you, you were given as a responsibility that you don't know anything about, so what? That will be, there's going to be some of them, for sure. Mm -hmm. Research it. Talk to people that know. Well, whether we talked in other podcasts about how good research engines are these days and about experiences here and overseas. If it is something about the topic that somebody else has done it somewhere else. We talk about success transfer in, a, in an organisation. We talk about have they done this in one industry. They put in a new process or new machinery or new system. Yes, it might be in manufacturing, but you can absolutely use it in, in human resources or wherever it is. So in that sense, do that. Just objectively get into why I'm feeling the way I feel and okay, accept, okay, I don't think I know what I'm talking about, find out. That's part of your growth and contribution, but also don't sell yourself short. Just remember you're there because you, I knew you could contribute and that's still valid. And they picked you because you can contribute and they need you. Yeah, and I think that in the short term, it's probably handy for you to have something that is the top of your the folder or whatever you take to these meetings that has the reminder for you about the fact that you put your hand up for this board because you thought you were going to be able to contribute and list what it is yeah. that you yeah. thought you were, you were going to be able to contribute so that you remind yourself before you go into every meeting or before you read the board papers, whatever it is, that the reasons that you're there, that it 
because you thought you were going to contribute these things. And if that's not happening, maybe it's because you're not offering that service, that idea, that, that thought. And take control. Don't be going into the situation thinking, well, I'm the newest board member, so I should sit here and listen. Yeah. Because that's not what a board's about. Yeah. And, it's, and it's not what a team's about. You know, if you're the newest team member, if, if someone asks you to be part of a team, that's yeah. not why you're there. You know, you're there for a reason, otherwise you're just wasting time. And, and don't say, like this, the, the words that we use, add to my depth. Yes, but are you out of your depth about everything? Surely mm. not. <laughs> you know, that's that's the other thing is a reality check is probably a good idea is I'm out of my depth about this technical issue. I'm out of my depth about this particular thing. And that's where you go and find, okay, so how do I find out and be, become familiar? But don't, don't talk yourself into being out of my depth about the whole job because it's yeah. not real. Just the phrase itself, out of my depth, mm. yeah, refers back to a swimming pool or a swimming area. And yeah. so you're, you're out of the depth where you can put your feet on the ground. But if you're out of your depth, it doesn't mean that you're drowning. Yeah. It just means that you can't put your feet mm. on the ground. You can still do things. You can still mm. swim away. You can still dog paddle. You can still float. Yeah. All of those things. So it's not a disastrous situation. You will know from previous podcasts that I'm very fond of a speaker called Simon Sonic. And he says that the great leaders are people who are comfortable saying, I don't know, I don't understand, I will find out. Yes. And all of those things are things that are important for you to remember, is that they're, they're things that you can say. It's no one's going to think any less of you. You don't have to know everything. You shouldn't know everything. Yes. Because by coming into a, a situation, a, a committee or a board, and thinking you know all the answers means you're not going to listen to what's yes. happening in the meeting at the time. You need to be able to react with what you know. Go with your gut. Go with your feelings. Listen to what's being talked about. Contribute without second guessing. Contribute without analysing. Otherwise you just get to paralysis by analysis and, and yes. you are not contributing. You are not there for the reasons that you should be there. You know where to go to find out information. It could be by talking to someone, it could be by looking it up, it could be anything. Just just say what Kim just mm. said. Then no, I will find out. Yeah. When you find out and you come back with it, and then not just find out the research, so, and for this circumstance, I think we should consider A, B, C, and D. So once you do your research, you already know you can then come up with the some suggested solutions or answers for the situation that you researched and that's when then you have a discussion about it and you agree on what uh, what, what you're going to go with. If it's a situation where you feel that you're being inundated with information at the last minute before a meeting, rather than rail against the fact that you're being inundated with this information that you're expected to digest in less than 24 hours, perhaps you take what I, I term the politician's approach and you don't address that issue of reading the information but you address a different issue which is the organisation of how the, the information gets distributed yes. or, or how people know that there's information or deadlines for getting reports in all of those sorts of things so that it comes back to horses for courses. You know, Don't look at the immediate, look at the broad picture mm. and start to think about have I got something that I could contribute to this organisation that would that, of, of this meeting that would make it more efficient for me? Yeah. And start thinking about yourself, not about the board. Think about what would make it easier for me and in that sense might ease you into feeling like you're contributing, like you've got something that, that they're looking for. Because it, for the most part, they will not put up their hand and say, we need help to organise ourselves. Yeah. And that's the bottom line, when all of the ones I've been involved with, that's what they've needed. They've needed someone to organise the committee itself, the board itself, to have a process for what happens before, between meetings, to have a an agreed communication yeah. platform. Yeah. For the most part these days it is not email, and we'll talk about that in a whole other session yeah. because email is just beyond communication mm -hmm. in these situations. But look at the process. Don't look at the immediacy of the meeting and what you have to determine at the meeting, but look a bit broader and, and bring to bear some of the things that work for you in your own
own work environment and start to, to contribute in that way from your experience, from your expertise, and that will make you feel that you do have something to contribute. That It's not contribute at the level that you I think you're lacking because it, perhaps you, you think you're lacking in knowledge of a particular topic, mm -hmm. but you do have other things to contribute. And you are, as we've said all along, you are there for a reason. Yeah. But when you're given that example about as you're walking into the meeting, you've been asked to address half a dozen issues, you're absolutely right. This is a process issue. Mm -hmm. And if it's happening to you, it's happening to other members. And sometimes it becomes the norm because nobody steps back and says, this is not very efficient. Mm -hmm. So by saying, look, I'm not going to attempt to answer those, but can we now, because we just got them, but let's talk about how, which is the process, as mm -hmm. you said, and agree on the process. What will happen then, instead of you being frustrated by you expect me to answer and I can't answer it, to putting a process in place that will help everyone, mm -hmm. but particularly you, because mm -hmm. you're coming in with fresh eyes as a new yeah. person. Yeah. So it, it is good. People might not respond immediately to that. They appreciate it when they realise that it helps them mm -hmm. as well. Can I put out a word of warning to all of you who are in large organisations or government organisations or areas that use acronyms? This is a bugbear of mine, has been for many, many years, is that you're used to them, you know what they mean, you use them all the time and you find that it's easier than writing out the whole word or the, the phrase that it refers to. But just bear in mind that not everyone understands your acronyms. Your acronyms might mean something different to someone in another organisation. Now, I had experience in the last two weeks of using of, of someone using acronyms and the person read them and thought they meant, meant something entirely different. And whilst it was amusing at the time because the acronym, what the person thought it meant, his initial reaction was that it was the World Wrestling Federation when it was something entirely different to do with a wetland. It was amusing at the time, but it highlighted for me that there's still this internal activity speak. happening mm -hmm. about internal speak, but particularly about acronyms. Yes. And so I urge you to think about the people who are getting your communication and to think about whether they might understand mm -hmm. the acronyms or not. And if there's any doubt, if there's any question in your mind, have a legend, yeah. have something, yeah. have a glossary of terms, have something that goes with every email, with every communication that outlines it. Now, you know that I was a consultant to the National Parks and Wildlife Service here in New South Wales for 15 years on their advisory committee, and always the manager sent us a glossary at the end of his report that had all the acronyms listed, because in the first two meetings, we had someone who was from another committee who took great delight mm -hmm. in, in saying, oh, this must mean, and it would be something entirely inappropriate. <laughs> but what it did was remind the manager that he really needed yeah. to tell us what he was talking about. And so he did the list once, and yeah. if there was new ones, he would add them to it. But it meant that we were always, between meetings might be two months, and so we were always able to refer back and know what he was talking about without having to, to try and work it out as we yeah. were going along reading the report. I think we probably covered enough of that for you to be going on with. I'm Kim Bailey. She's Pauline Osborne and this is Inside Exec. Mm -hmm.